So yesterday we learned that Donald Trump's former chief of staff, John Kelly, a retired four-star general, confirmed that while Donald Trump was president, he said he wanted generals like Adolf Hitler had. Ah, the old Adolf Hitler card. I, uh, she, but, but the Ava Braun of the Democrat Party, this is, uh, this is just, you know, it's true that it's just name calling. They're just name calling and they're recruiting people to, to name call with them. But the theme, I believe from now until election day, since they can't say, hey, look what a great job we've done with the economy and with groceries and with energy costs and gasoline. They can't say, hey, look, we, uh, we've got fewer Venezuelan gang members than ever before roaming the streets of your hometown. There are fewer Haitians eating your cats and dogs. What are cats and dogs? You know, wait, uh, remember when Barack Obama told us what dog meat he, because he ate, had, did he ever eat cats too? Oh, as we understand it, no. The, uh, but dogs, yes, he ate, uh, he ate dogs. And he's not even Haitian. You know, what's, uh, what's with him? I know, were the Haitians eating the cats and dogs in, uh, in Ohio? Well, uh, that I, I don't know what uh, Snopes would say about that. What do you think the fact checker is? I'd say unconfirmed. I think it would say unconfirmed. Uh, just a coincidence that a bunch of Asians show up and then uh, house pets started disappearing. Never mind the voodoo thing. You know, the voodoo. Every time you hear voodoo, I, everybody thinks the same thing, right? You think, you know, that uh, you do that voodoo that you do so well or whatever it is. Uh, but the... The, uh, the Democrats, they don't have any affirmative, positive case to make for their own performance as president and vice president. And since they, and in the polls, they're losing black male voters and they're losing Latino voters. And uh, although uh, Joe Biden calls them Latinx, Latinx, because they're genderless uh, to his way of thinking. And and they're uh, not doing as well as they'd like. And I love all this talk about internal polls. So you've been hearing this everywhere. You, oh, well, yeah, but their internal poll numbers are even better. Or their internal poll numbers show that it's even worse than you think. And I'm like, well, wh- why do we have external polls and internal polls? Why don't you take a poll? And then you can either share the information from the poll or not. But uh, whispering that there are internal polls that they're keeping secret and, you know, an anonymous source tells me that the, I, I love this anonymous source stuff too. The anonymous source said the internal polls are even worse than the uh, apparently external polls. And, and they're so bad that, that they're afraid they're going to lose. And, and the uh, Republican voters are showing up in droves to vote early as never before. Because historically, Republicans vote on election day like normal people in Western civilization, but the Democrats have so corrupted everything because they're the left and they're radical and they're extremists and they will steal anything that's not screwed to the floor. And uh, no, I'm not talking about, I know what you're thinking, but, but they, uh, I I should say nailed to the floor. It's, uh, it's probably uh, um, better for family entertainment that way, but but amazing stuff. So now what the Democrats are doing, and this means CNN and the New York Times and, and Kamala Harris and the Democrats, what they're doing instead is they're calling everybody, hit, well, they're calling Trump Hitler, and, <clears throat> and really half the country are a bunch of fascists. Remember when half the country were just deplorables? Just deplorables. Now, now half the country, because, you know, the left, uh, keeping in mind that Hitler's party was the Socialist Workers' Party of Germany and, and that Benito Mussolini was a leader in the Socialist Party in Italy. Uh, Before late in his career, he jumped over because the fascists were going somewhere. And uh, the word comes from Italian roots and all that stuff. But, you know, a bundle of sticks bound together, being strong uh, as a group, stronger than a single stick would be. uh, But that's not important now. And Benito Mussolini said that, uh, that fascism is a merging of state and corporate power, which we see the Democrats doing everywhere with all their billionaires. Uh, who was it yesterday that gave 50? Oh, it was Bill Gates, right? That gave $50 million to the Democrats because of the merger of state and corporate power. The billionaire oligarchs, in particular, the information oligarchs, are in bed 
uh, in the hot tub with the Democrat Party. Hot tub uh, with their hands all under the water and everything. Amazing stuff. But the uh, their talking point, their, their campaign now is, well, don't even talk about us. We know we suck. We haven't done anything right. We've ruined everything. The economy and energy and education and the border and war in Europe and war in the Middle East. What can they possibly point to that would um, make them look like the people you'd want to vote for? What? Hey, you want more war in Europe? Vote for us. Maybe World War Three is just around the corner. Uh, keeping in mind that the Democrats, you know, they had Jefferson Davis as the president of the Confederacy in the Civil War. Uh, Woodrow Wilson uh, got us into World War One in Europe when, uh, you know, for the most part, people didn't want to go. Why would you want to go to a war in Europe in, you know, when they're uh, flaring up again? And that started in 1914 and we got in in 1917. Hey, maybe we should be in that war. Uh, no, probably not. My grandfather went, though, and uh, he killed some Germans. He got, uh, he, got, he got a purple heart, too, because Germans were trying to kill him. Uh, and then uh, World War II uh, comes along. Now the Japanese did bomb Pearl Harbor, but uh, World War II was already very much underway before Pearl Harbor. And then uh, FDR, who ignored the Holocaust, um, got us into World War II, but then he did throw Asian people in concentration camps here in the United States because the Democrats, you know, they're kind of fascists, and they've always been pretty fascist, honestly. And uh, and then we got out of uh, World War II after Harry Truman dropped Democrat dropped two atomic bombs on the poor innocent Japanese people, and and then Harry Truman got us into the Korean War because you know the Democrats love the war machine, and and then and then uh, you know a- after that. Uh, John F. Kennedy started sending our troops into Vietnam, but it was really LBJ that got us in up to our eyeballs. And it was Richard Nixon that got us out of Vietnam, right? And then the uh, they educate our kids at school that Vietnam, the Vietnam War was Richard Nixon's war. Ask any 20-year-old, ask any 30-year-old, uh, Vietnam. Oh, yeah, didn't Richard Nixon get us into? No, but it's the Democrats, just the Civil War, World War I, World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War. Now Joe Biden comes in. He's Mr. Military Industrial Complex, Mr. War Machine. Now, of course, Barack Obama got the Nobel Peace Prize, and then he bombed more countries as president than any president since World War II. You know, the, the, the checkered history of the Democrat Party is, is really quite an awful history, and somebody should say it out loud. I guess it uh, falls to me. Uh, and, and then Joe Biden comes in. There's peace in Europe. There's peace in the Middle East. Trump got three peace deals between Israel and Arab nations, moved our embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, had a settlement named after him, Trump did. Peace in the Middle East, peace in Israel, no war, nobody being butchered, no hostages being taken. Uh, Joe Biden gave Iran $6 billion for five hostages that they were holding. Uh, And, of course, Barack Obama made sure that that, uh, Iran got tens of billions probably more than $100 billion to wage their jihad against civilization. It's almost like the Democrats aren't on our side. Hey, wait a minute, where have I heard that? The Democrats, they're not on our side because they're not on our side. And now what they're pushing is, uh, like, don't look at us. You know, we've got nothing positive to say about ourselves or anybody else. But the other guy is Hitler. He's Hitler. Now, he was president for four years. There was no Hitler stuff going on. Uh, we controlled our, uh, our own border pretty darn well, and uh, we, uh, we had sovereignty, national sovereignty under Donald Trump, and uh, we weren't at, at war in the Middle East, and, you know, we just sent uh, U.S. Army troops, we're sending them now, with uh, anti-missile missile battery. Uh, they're anti-missile missiles, that's what they're called, because these missiles shoot down other missiles, so they're anti-missile missiles. And then if you develop a generation of missiles to shoot down those missiles, those would be anti-anti-missile missiles. That's right, they would. Uh, but uh, Michael's looking at me like, no. And so, yeah, yeah, it's true. It's all true. Trust me, I know this stuff. All right, now, the Democrats, what they're doing is they're calling everybody Hitler. And, and when Kamala goes on CNN with Manderson Pooper, the question is, is he Hitler? Is he a fascist? And when General John Kelly agrees to do an interview by phone with the New York Times, they say, is he a fascist? 
Uh, and that's, you know, just say yes, because we're the New York Times. You know how we want you to answer. We want you to say yes, he's a fascist, because the Democrat Party is staging another coup. It's an information warfare episode, information operation. Remember in 2020 when the Democrats had, and it was the Democrats, Anthony Blinken was working, now Secretary of State. He's in Doha in Qatar. It's not Qatar. It's it's Qatar because that's the American pronunciation. And they can, you know, take their Kiev pronunciation and, you know, what they can do with it. But back to the uh, the propaganda campaign because this is what they're doing. They're, they're trying to label Donald Trump as Hitler and every Trump voter as a fascist because we remember when gasoline was $2.11 a gallon, when heating oil, uh, you know, didn't leave mom wondering whether she would get ramen noodles today or turn the heat on for a couple of hours. But you remember when Barack Obama said under his plan of cap, cap and trade, um, electricity costs would necessarily skyrocket. Skyrocket is the word that he used while trying to convince Democrat voters that this is a good thing, and most of them bought it because they they excelled. Really, their strength is in the low IQ voter, isn't it? So so here it comes. The label everybody, uh, well, label uh, Trump as Hitler, and uh, let's see. Let's go to. Let's go to the the New York Times with General Kelly. Then we'll get to Kamala Harris uh, outside the vice president's residence yesterday where she called him a fascist. And then she sat down with CNN and they say, isn't he a fascist? Isn't he Hitler? Uh, And and this is what they're doing because they're so awful uh, as leaders that they have to turn it into this. Here's the uh, New York Times. Who is the fascist reporter with the New York Times talking to General John Kelly? who was uh, Donald Trump's chief of staff. And General Kelly really doesn't like Donald Trump. He really, really doesn't like him a lot. And that's why the New York Times called him. And then they tee up the Democrat Party talking point to lead him into this so they can get the headline, General Kelly, Trump's chief of staff, says Trump is a fascist, but it's all in the question that is asked and the way that it's asked. You, what do you think? Do you think he's a fascist? Good question. Well, I'm looking at the definition of fascism. <laughs> uh, it's a far right, authoritarian, ultra nationalist political ideology and movement characterized by a dictatorial leader, centralized autocracy, militarism, forcible suppression of opposition, belief in a natural social hierarchy. That's what the dictionary says. Um, so certainly, so, in my experience, uh, those are the kind of things that he thinks uh, would, would work better in terms of running America. Those are the kinds of things that would work better in terms of running America. Uh, Dado, did he uh, say, did he volunteer anything? No, he was te- and then he read the dictionary definition, and he said, and those are what uh, ultra-nationalists, and I'm, now if you're in a courtroom, you'd start asking, well, what example do you have of his being ultra-nationalist? And and being authoritarian. Was it all the peace around the world? General Kelly. But certainly uh, the former president uh, is in the far right area. He's certainly an authoritarian. I don't even uh, believe that. Uh, admires people who are dictators. Uh, he admires he people who are, He said um, that. So he fa- certainly falls into the, into the general definition of, of uh, fascist. For sure. Because he said he gets along with Kim Jong-un, right? That's uh, And that's it. Now, I understand General Kelly, and, uh, you know, and, uh, always been an honorable adult man. He really, really doesn't like Donald Trump. And so the New York Times called him to, to feed him the word, a fascist. Is he a fascist? And he reads the dictionary definition, and then kind of grudgingly, the hemming and hawing, well, I guess, you know, uh, and then the headlines everywhere are, he's a fascist, even his own chief of staff. General John Kelly says so. Uh, and uh, I met General Kelly once or twice, very briefly. We're not old pals or anything, but, you know, a great American um, up to a point. But then you get sucked into this political warfare. And General Kelly, I, you know, this is beneath you. This You really shouldn't be doing this. The New York Times sucked you in. You're being used by the left. Uh, Trump is not, he didn't say he loves dictators. 
He was being Trump. It was a Trumpism. He's like, yeah, you know, I did, but I told him what to do. And and also he did have Kim Jong Un in a box, and he had Putin in a box, and uh, and he was playing tough with them, which is what the United States ought to be doing with these tough guys in the world in order to avoid, you know, hundreds of millions dead in World War III. Call me old fashioned. That might be a little too twentieth century. You know, football season is heating up, you may have noticed, and Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action while you're watching football. With more than 10 million members and billions of dollars in awarded winnings, Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all of us, to everyone. The app is incredibly easy to use, simple to use. You pick two or more players in any sport, pick more or less on their projections, you know, and you could win up to 100 times your money. Prize Picks even invented flex play, flex play, so that you can still cash out if one of your picks doesn't hit. What's that? That's right. Download the Prize Picks app today and use the code PLANT, P L A N T E, and you're going to get a $50 credit instantly when you play $5. The code is PLANT, that's my last name, on prize picks to get a $50 credit instantly when you play only $5. You don't even need to win to get your $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize picks, run your game. Must be present in certain states where it's lawful to wager. Visit prizepicks.com for the details and restrictions. Yes, sir. Yeah, so General Kelly, you get to hear him hemming and hawing. He reads the dictionary definition and kind of grudgingly, yeah, yeah, Sorry, General, you got sucked in by the New York Times. Uh, but uh, we're not done with uh, the Hitler fascist thing. That's uh, plenty more coming up. So he fa- certainly falls into the, into the general definition of, of uh, fascist, for sure. All right, lots of crazy audio coming up for you. We got time for a quick call, I think. Let's go to Greg calling from Bethesda, Maryland. Gregory, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Thanks, Chris. I uh, love the show. I uh, just wanted to say, like, this far-right criticism of Donald Trump, who supports abortion, doesn't want a nationwide abortion ban, really didn't, didn't curb spending like he should have, you know, didn't do, a, you know, uh, had some, you know, uh, some gun control uh, things that he, regulations that he passed. That's far-right to these people. These people don't deserve to have, you know, they're not, they're not illuminated. They're not, they don't have any uh, intelligence on this issue. They call Larry Hogan far right here in Maryland. This is the dumbest criticism I think you can make of Donald Trump. And if anything, he's not far right enough, especially on fiscal matters, because this country is going into extreme bankruptcy very soon. Anyway, love hearing what you're, love, love your show. Always will be listening. Thank you very much, Greg. A very succinctly executed call, too. Uh, I like that. That's that's wonderful. We, listen, we've got more uh, General John Kelly coming up. We got the uh, Kamala at the Veep's residence yesterday and on CNN with Manderson Cooper. All right. The, uh, the smear of Donald Trump and America and Trump supporters is, is now the uh, it's not just the centerpiece of the Kamala campaign. It's, it's all there is to it. There is no other peace. They don't have anything that they can say about themselves that would make you want to vote for them and have them in power again. And a left-wing magazine called The Atlantic, uh, they published an article also about how Trump is a danger to democracy because that's the Democrat Party talking point. And Jeffrey Goldberg is the reporter on the story. He's a guy who... um, Uh, made up all kinds of stories about Saddam Hussein and al-Qaeda operating together. Uh, I did my TV show on Newsmax last night with Colonel Tony Schaefer. Colonel Colonel Tony Schaefer was on a great guy, Army uh, Lieutenant Colonel uh, Romp and Stomp and, you know, uh, Special Forces guy and uh, CIA went through the farm uh, for a CIA. And we were talking about this last night, this article in Jeffrey Goldberg, who uh, made a big deal out of his reporting where Uh, He said he learned uh, on the lead up to the Iraq war that and he was contributing to the war machine uh, and to the the drumbeat for war. Jeffrey Goldberg was saying that Saddam Hussein was working with al Qaeda uh, later. uh, Well, never proven, let's say, but he was uh, beating the drums of war. And now he's got a piece in the Atlantic with uh, the headline Trump colon. Oh, they love their colons. 
I need the kind of generals that Hitler had. That's uh, the actual headline here. The Republican nominee's preoccupation with dictators. There is no preoccupation with dictators. That's a fiction. That's uh, fabricated by the radical left, uh, which harvests the organs of a million babies a year. And they call for Israel to be wiped off the map from the river to the sea. Those are all Democrats. And his disdain for the American military is deepening. His disdain for the American military. Well, now he's got General Kelly, a former Marine Corps four-star, who is uh, going after him by way of the New York Times. That's not going to enhance his opinion of the military, to be sure. Uh, And the uh, radical left-wing extremist uh, fake reporter Jeffrey Goldberg writing in the Atlantic, a left-wing political rag, uh, another front group for the Democrat Party, organ harvesters from way back. And uh, they have two anonymous sources who say that they were there when uh, Donald Trump said this fantastical thing about, about Hitler's generals. I wish I had generals like Hitler had. Now, why would anybody say that? That's a, that's a little bit ridiculous, isn't it? But they've got two. So, you know, that's, that's good enough for them. Two anonymous. They won't name them because why would you name them? Mm-mm-mm. Yes, sir. According to two people present at the meeting, Trump passed. I got to tell you, it's oh, and this is where they say that uh, he said a bad thing about a Mexican American uh, uh, soldier, American soldier who was murdered, <clears throat> and Donald Trump offered to pay for her funeral if the military wasn't going to pay for her funeral, and he brought the family in, and the family loves him, and the family shot down. The whole claim in this Atlantic piece by Jeffrey Goldberg, but the fake news media, they don't care. They could care less about that. Why would they? Why would they? Mm -mm -mm. I'm telling you. Yes, sir. It's uh, all uh, it's all anonymous news. And they've got uh, I need the kind of generals that Hitler had. Trump said in a private conversation in the White House, according to two people who heard him say this. Who are those two people? because they don't name them. So uh, Jeffrey Goldberg, who's a famous, notorious hack, uh, and and two anonymous people that uh, will remain anonymous, absolutely ridiculous. So the news media, the phony, corrupt news media, they're going around finding people that hate Trump, and they're saying, do you think he's a fascist? And it's always teed up in the question, right? What are you going to say? No, no, I don't, I don't think so, New York Times. I, uh, But uh, since you put it that way, maybe I'll... So Kamala Harris, we just uh, played some of the John Kelly. Do you have another John Kelly that uh, from the New York Times audio? And then Kamala, I was on the air yesterday when we learned that Kamala would be speaking outside of the vice president's residence, possible violation of the Hatch Act uh, using the backdrop of her official residence. If it were at the White House, uh, it would likely be illegal. So is it illegal at the vice president's residence? Nobody knows. It's, you know, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop? But here's Kamala outside the Veep's residence yesterday after being told what General John Kelly had said to a New York Times reporter. It is clear from John Kelly's words that Donald Trump is someone who I quote, certainly falls into the general definition of fascist. Who I? Who in fact vowed to be a dictator on day one and vowed to use the military as his personal militia to carry out his personal and political vendettas. You know, I went searching for that uh, President Trump saying that he's going to use the military to carry out his personal vendettas, and I can't find that anywhere. And I've looked and looked, and I see people saying that, that he said he's going to use the military as his personal, and I can't find any... Nobody says, you know, here's the videotape of Trump saying that. Nobody says, here's where Trump said that. It's probably another anonymous source talking to Jeffrey Goldberg or, or something just uh, completely crazy. Donald Trump is increasingly unhinged and unstable. And in a second term, people like John Kelly would not be there to be the guardrails against his propensities and his actions. You know, my understanding is that General Kelly and General Mattis, while in the White House, both had an intense dislike for Donald Trump, didn't like the idea, the fact that he was president of the United States, didn't like it at all. Uh, We're never in his camp. 
uh, and and we're not there really to help him, but perhaps to to undo his presidency. Uh, it it didn't work because he honestly had a pretty successful presidency, didn't he? Uh, Kamala also said, uh, pulling out this old thing that Trump said he's going to be a dictator on day one. Now, that's an audio soundbite that we've played here over and over again. He was doing a, a town hall with Sean Hannity, and Sean Hannity and the Democrats were calling him a dictator and calling him a dictator. And so Sean Hannity asked him, are you going to be a dictator? You're already president for four years. Are you going to be a dictator if you're reelected? You're not going to be a dictator, are you? I said, no, 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 other than day one. We're closing the border. And we're drilling, drilling, drilling. After that, I'm not a dictator. Well, that, okay. that. And everybody cheered and laughed and whistled and because it was a funny Trump doing his Rodney Dangerfield thing, you know. Yeah, I'm going to be a dictator on day one. And we're going to drill, baby, drill. We go to energy resources uh, back on the front burner. And the Democrats, they don't want you to have a front burner because they don't want you using natural gas. So when the electricity goes out, everything goes out. And is the electricity still out in Cuba? You see, the whole country lost the, the power grid, went down in the whole country. They were trying to get it back where they live in Havana, and they were getting, they were restoring some electricity for the party leaders. But that was about it. But it's, I think, out for five days or six days in the whole country because that's what commies do. And, uh, you know, they had rolling blackouts and brownouts in California because of what these people do. So that and so that's him saying, yeah, I'm going to be a dictator. And they're saying he actually said he's going to be a dictator when he comes back. That's what they say, because they lie about everything. Lion Sacagawea. She gets the Lion Sacagawea Award for the day. Isn't that amazing? So they say these crazy things like he's going to be. He said he's going to be. He's going to use the military to get his. Uh, when did he when did he say that again? And. And it's true that sometimes Trump is off the cuff and he's doing shtick and he's being funny. And then they uh, excise a few words from the uh, longer quote and they put him in quotation marks and they demonize him based on on the falsehoods. Isn't it amazing? So, yeah, Kamala came out and uh, said, yeah, John Kelly told The New York Times and he's uh, he's doing a phoner with The New York Times. And Well, the dictionary says that fashion, blah, blah, blah. And you got a, a Trump hater, and he's got credentials uh, up the yin yang, General Kelly, of course. But, and then are we moving to Manderson Pooper now? Because Manderson Pooper then had Kamala on uh, CNN, and and you'll never guess what the what the first question was. It's absolutely amazing. I want to start by asking you though: for weeks you have been calling Donald Trump unstable, unhinged. You've called him dangerous. You've quoted General Milley recently, who called him a fascist. Today, you quoted General Kelly, who said that Trump repeatedly praised Hitler. But there are tens of millions of Americans right now who have heard all those things and they don't buy it. Or even if they do, they're still going to vote for Donald Trump. He's arguably more popular now than ever. You have 13 days to go. What do you say to those voters to convince them? Because some of them are in this room. Yeah, you got to come on because some of them are in this room. Uh, and, you know, this guy called him a fash. That's thoroughly modern Millie that uh, talking about their chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff under uh, Joe Biden, who wanted to have an all transgender military. He wanted to have an all gay transgender military. He wanted them to put on a show, you know, a musical uh, in three acts. And uh, thoroughly modern Millie is thoroughly mockable as chairman of the Joint Chiefs. But never mind that. Uh, that's Manderson Pooper, lifelong Democrat who inherited a billion dollars or whatever he inherited. It's uh, it's good to be a, like born to the manner to the manner born. He who has openly admired dictators said he would be a dictator on day one. The former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff has said he is a fascist to the core. Thoroughly modern Millie. So I think that when the American people reflect, especially those who are undecided on who you should listen to. Don't take my word for it. In fact, go online and listen to John Kelly, his voice, talking about what he thinks of Donald Trump two weeks before the election. I, uh, you know, the the Democrat Party's propaganda apparatus is everything to them. It's all they have. Uh, And CNN is a, a fascist outlet. It's everybody's fascist. Now, we just call everybody fascist from now on. Because what is it? Let's go to the dictionary definition, and I'll uh, I'll show you what it's all about. Isn't that amazing? Uh uh uh. 
Man, oh, man. Uh, boop, boop, boop. The Washington Post today. If Trump is really a fascist, then call me a fool. His former advisors only say this because they had a bad time working for him. Alexandra Petrie at, uh, it's Petrie, at the uh, Washington Post. And here it is. Look, now two of Donald Trump's top advisors, who had apparently been uh, uh, trapped in a cryogenic sleep chamber until just moments ago, have gone on the record saying that the former president is, quote, fascist to the core. That's the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, thoroughly modern General Mark Milley. Certainly falls into the general definition of fascist, former chief of staff John F. Kelly. They only think this because they worked with Trump for years, apparently spending much of their time preventing him from sending troops against the American people, deflecting his multiple requests for military parades and repeatedly explaining to him that you do not under any circumstance ha- uh, have to hand have to hand it to Adolf Hitler. Uh, you know, I got to tell you, and, and uh, they've got books out. They haven't... Uh, uh, called him these things in the past, but, 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 mm-mm-mm. but remember, Donald Trump had said he's not. See, he's not. He's not a fascist. He's not Hitler. And uh, they don't have any. Uh, they, they, they say these things without evidence. You see, without evidence, they've got anonymous, nameless, faceless people that Jeffrey Goldberg says told him that he said this, and and that's it. And then General Kelly stumbles through the dictionary definition of fascist and says, well, you know, I guess generally. And then Kamala comes out and says, even his own chief of staff said this is how the snowball, how the lie snowballs. Just amazing stuff. So, uh, yeah, Kamala. And he's openly admired dictators. Um, No, no. He's uh, spoken about how uh, he works well with uh, Kim Jong-un because he's trying to keep the crazy commie in a box while he was president of the United States, uh, which he did successfully, by the way. And really, if you're going to be president, you should bring in people that are your allies. Uh, Kamala Harris, uh, yesterday with Manderson Pooper. It is close, but there are undecided voters who clearly, by being here, have an open mind, want to talk in a way that is grounded in issues and fact. And when they hear these facts, I think it, it compels a lot of people to be concerned about the future of our country with Donald Trump at the lead. Yeah, well, we've already had that experience for four years, of pretty great years, I've got to say. Then the Wuhan Red Death came along from the communists, and uh, now the communists are in charge of the Democrat Party. Manderson Pooper. You've quoted General Milley calling Donald Trump a, a fascist. You yourself have not used that word to describe him. Let me ask you tonight, do you think Donald Trump is a fascist? Yes, I do. Yes, I, yes do. I do. Yes, I do. And I and I also <clears throat> believe that the people who know him best on this subject should be trusted. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, well, but they served it, and they didn't sound the alarm, and they didn't uh, raise any concerns at the time when it would have mattered a great deal more. But uh, you know, Trump derangement syndrome comes in many forms. So he's a fascist. Now he could have uh, Manderson Pooper could have stumped her by saying, "Define fascist." Is it, well, uh, that, and she would have fallen through uh, a trap door in the floor, never to be seen again. Duh, duh, duh. You know, Eden Pure is right now having their famous BOGO deal on the Eden Pure Thunderstorm air purifiers. When you buy one thunderstorm, you get one for free. And no matter how many you buy, you get an equal number for free. You buy two, you get two for free. You buy uh, 2200 you get 2200 You know, you see how this works. It's remarkable. At least when you buy five, you get five for free. The thunderstorm will help completely eliminate any odor, even the worst smelly odors like, you know, litter boxes and your mother-in-law's cooking and Michael Moore, should Michael Moore show up on your front doorstep. Nothing can hide from the thunderstorm. The thunderstorm sends out O3 molecules that seek out and destroy odors. These molecules go underneath and behind furniture, too. Nothing can hide from the thunderstorm. And now is the time to order because it's Eden Pure's buy one, get one free sale for a limited time only. So don't sit around and wait. With thousands of five-star reviews on Al Gore's amazing internet, you know it works like a champ. We've got two at home. People are buying several for around the house and even as gifts, too. 
it might be a hint, and, uh, and that's a good thing. Just go to EdenPureDeals.com and use the discount code CHRISBOGO. That's C-H-R-I-S-B-O-G-O, buy one, get one. That's EdenPureDeals.com and use the code CHRISBOGO. Bomb, bomb. Burning down a house. This is what the Democrats are doing. The house is our country. I've got so much to say about all this. Isn't it funny how the left uh, goes to the generals to call people fascists? The left, a bunch of warmongering fascists that they are. Uh, let's uh, grab a quick phone call. Let's go to let's go to Rose calling from Shady Side, Maryland. Oh, Rose, you're on the Chris Plant Show. Uh, hi, Chris. Hi, Rose. I'm listening to you. Wonderful, wonderful. So what do you know? What do you say, Rose? Well, I'm just a random uh, fastest great-grandmother who just early voted for Trump. I just just wanted to say that if Abraham Lincoln were alive today, he might have a thing or two to say about insubordinate generals and would certainly commiserate with Trump's frustration. Well, um, you're, you're saying that uh, Abraham Lincoln could have used better generals, too? Absolutely. Well, and, you know, Abraham Lincoln, since you uh, brought it up, Rose, Abraham Lincoln, it uh, should be noted, they would be calling him a fascist today, too. And I think the Democrats, we didn't have the word fascism in our lexicon uh, when the Democrats launched the first civil war. But uh, Abraham Lincoln suspended habeas corpus. Abraham Lincoln, uh, you know, uh, the states actually had the right to secede. And Abraham Lincoln did not acknowledge their right to secede. Uh, Abraham Lincoln, again, when you suspend habeas corpus, that's kind of a big constitutional crisis, a big deal. Suspended uh, civil liberties during the Civil War because the Democrats wanted to keep their slaves. And, um, you know, the uh, the states had a right to declare war. Uh, the, they had a right to secede. And Abraham Lincoln, you know, theoretically violated the Constitution all over the place during the Civil War. Uh, emergency war powers and all of that stuff. But I'm sure that the Democrats would be calling him a fascist today, too. Uh, and, you know, by the way, it was the Democrats that were the breakaway republics and the and the breakaway states and the slave masters. 